SWIFT stands for the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. To put it simply, SWIFT is a messaging network, not unlike the one on your mobile phone. The only difference being that it's super secure. It's used by banks around the world to communicate requests related to international money transfer. SWIFT never actually holds the money at any point, it just transfers the information so the institutions can stay connected. Some of the messages that are transferred using SWIFT are customer payment requests, acknowledgement of receipt of payment, and messages to inform that payment is on the way. More than 11,000 financial institutions in over 200 countries use SWIFT. They exchange an average of 40 million messages per day, facilitating the transfer of trillions of dollars. It was founded in 1973 and it started out as a cooperation between banks around the world. The aim was to make a uniform system to be adopted by each of the banks. This prevented each bank from having to make its own system, reducing costs for all members. It also had the added benefit of preventing one bank from monopolising the market with their own system. Currently, it's headquartered in Belgium and the network is jointly owned by more than 2,000 banks and financial institutions. It operates from three data centres located in the United States, the Netherlands and Switzerland. Underwater cables allow rapid communication between the centres and in the case of emergency the systems can manage with just two centres. The three main services that SWIFT provide are as follows an encrypted messaging network for transmitting messages between financial institutions, a standardised language and layout of messages understood across the world, a set of software or hardware to allow the users to access the network. Some of the benefits to SWIFT include that it's widely adopted around the world already and the infrastructure already exists. Members are already trained on the system internationally and the processes are tried and tested. This means that there would be a significant initial cost if a replacement was to be made. It's also supposed to have high security due to the encrypted messages, but there has been some breaches which we will discuss in a little while. One of the main negatives is that it's been criticised for its inefficiencies. This is because transfers can only take place between banks which have accounts with one another. Banks aren't connected with every other bank so the messages have to be rerouted to other banks through a web which eventually gets the money to where it needs to go. This isn't really the fault of SWIFT itself as this relates to the transfer of money rather than the transfer of information. But SWIFT does facilitate the system and provides the routes between the banks. The banks that own SWIFT have little to gain from changing this as every additional transfer earns them more money in transfer charges. Another negative is that it's not anonymous and there are reports of agencies like the NSA monitoring transfers. This could be breaking some laws as monitoring has taken place on the masses without warrants. It's currently overseen by the National Bank of Belgium in partnership with several other central banks to ensure that standards are followed. However, there have been a string of security breaches and thefts originating in less economically developed countries suggesting monitoring has been insufficient in many cases. Some examples are In 2016, over 80 million was stolen from the Bangladesh Central Bank through its account at the New York Federal Reserve. In the same year, dozens of banks were reportedly breached in Ukraine through the SWIFT network and have lost an undisclosed sum of money. Attacks have been made involving malware which sent hidden requests for money transfers as well as through unauthorised access to the system. SWIFT is supposed to remain impartial in international disputes, but it's been used as a tool by many governments as a sanction on misbehaving countries. In 2012, Iran was banned due to escalations in its nuclear programme, resulting in losses of over 30% in foreign trade, mainly from exports of oil. And more recently, Russia has been removed from SWIFT due to the Ukrainian conflict. Russia's former finance minister, Alexei Kurdin, suggested being cut from SWIFT could shrink Russia's economy by 5%, but the effects are yet to be fully understood. One important point to consider is that it won't only affect Russia, as other countries that rely on Russian trade will have to find alternatives, which could prove to be very costly, particularly to Germany and other EU countries relying on Russian natural gas. 
Banning Russia from SWIFT could also just push it further away from the West as it could strengthen ties with other countries by using competitors, such as CIPS, which deals in the Chinese currency. Cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and Bitcoin are another potential alternative to SWIFT. They are seeking to decentralise the financial industry, which if successful could wipe out the need for such technologies. Thank you for watching the video, please consider subscribing if you think I've earned it. If you want to see more of my work, click the tile to find out how lighters work and the science of making fire.